Hi everyone, today we're going to be discussing the difference between research hypotheses and statistical hypotheses. It's really important to understand the difference between these two hypotheses because it's going to help you in designing your research studies and also in effectively communicating them in either a lab report or a journal article. Unfortunately, these two are commonly confused, so it's important to understand the difference between them. So let's delve in firstly by talking about what a research hypothesis is. So what is a research hypothesis? Well, it's a testable statement and it predicts how two or more variables are going to behave in your research study. It's a statement which is a scientific claim and it could do a couple of things. So firstly, it might predict a causal relationship. So this is where you're looking at the differences between two groups, or it could make a claim about the relationship between two variables, how they're co-occurring together. So this is very different to the role of a statistical hypothesis. The null and alternative hypotheses are statistical hypotheses, which we'll delve into in a minute. But what does the research hypothesis do? Well, it sets the stage for designing your study where you're going to go out and collect your data, which will allow you to test the truth of the hypothesis. And so you would find your research hypothesis in a lab report or a journal article. So what are statistical hypotheses? Well, statistical hypotheses are statements that are mathematically precise and they have to correspond to claims about characteristics of the data generating mechanism. In this case, it's the population. So we're making claims about how our population is going to be behaving with particular variables. So our statistical analyses, for example, a t-test, which looks at group differences, are testing the accuracy of the null hypothesis. So they're saying, does this hold true or does it not? So the null hypothesis, this is sometimes notated as H0, it states that there's no pattern or trend in the data. So basically there's no difference between the groups or there's no relationship between the two variables of interest. So this differs to the alternative hypothesis, which you might uh, see as HA or H1, H2, etc., um, depending on how many alternative hypotheses you're, you're making. And this is a statement uh, that says there's a distinct pattern or trend in the data. So basically you're saying there's going to be a significant difference between the groups of interest or that there's a relationship between two variables. So let's have a look at an example of a null and alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis might be that the population mean reading test score for second grade students, which has our population of interest, taught using the new reading program is equal to the previous year's mean of 45. So basically here you're saying there's no statistically significant difference between the two time points last year and this year in terms of the second grade students reading score. If you're predicting that there is a difference, however, this is the alternative hypothesis. So we can see below there that we're predicting that the population mean reading test score for second grade students taught using the new reading program is not equal to the previous mean year's mean of 45. So we're saying there is going to be a statistically significant difference between those two time points. However, note that we haven't actually stated which direction it's going to go. So we don't know at this stage if we're predicting that uh, this year's mean is going to be higher or lower than last year's mean or reading performance. An important thing to note here as well is that rejecting a null hypothesis and accepting the alternative hypothesis, so accepting H1 is true, doesn't necessarily provide support for the research hypothesis that was tested. I'll explain why that could be in a minute. Um, but to summarize, you as the researcher, you really have two very distinct hypotheses to consider. So firstly, you have a research hypothesis, which is your claim about psychology or a particular phenomenon that's occurring with your variables. 
And this corresponds to a statistical hypothesis, your null and alternative hypothesis, which you're testing with your analyses. And this is a claim about how your population is going to behave. So now that we've gone through H0 and H1, your null and alternative hypothesis, we need to consider if your research hypothesis is supported. So as I mentioned before, rejecting the null hypothesis and accepting the alternative doesn't necessarily provide support for your research hypothesis that was tested. So for example, a psychologist may predict that those with a severe traumatic brain injury will have higher depressive symptoms than those with mild or moderate traumatic brain injuries, which is your research hypothesis here. So you can see here that we've got three distinct groups. We've got those with a mild TBI, those with moderate, and those with a severe TBI. And our outcome variable, um, our dependent variable, which is what we're trying to measure, is depressive symptoms. Now, what could our null and alternative hypothesis be? Well, a null hypothesis might be that the population mean depression score for mild, moderate, and severe TBI groups are equal. So what we're saying here is that we predict there to be no difference in the depression scores of the three respective groups. Our alternative hypothesis, however, says that the population mean depression score for mild, moderate and severe TBI groups are not equal. So what we're saying here is that we're predicting there to be a difference somewhere between these three groups in terms of the depression score. However, we know that our alternative hypothesis doesn't prescribe a particular direction or predict which group might be higher or lower. So we've gone, we've collected our data, we run our analysis, and what we've actually found is that the observed difference may not be the one that was predicted in the research hypothesis. So perhaps those with mild TBI actually are found to have higher depression scores than the moderate or severe groups. So whilst we can safely reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the three groups, our research hypothesis is still not supported. We've predicted mild, the mild group to, um, sorry, the severe group to have higher depressive symptoms, but our results actually show that the mild group has the highest depressive symptoms. So our research hypothesis in this case is not supported. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you found it a helpful discussion on what the differences are between the null and alternative hypothesis. If you're interested in learning how to go about writing your research hypothesis, including how to operationalize your variables, I'll link that below in another video. Thanks so much.